Listen to my story. The Final Fantasy series is truly one of a kind, and if any game series has influenced my life more than any other, it's definitely this one. I know I'm just a random guy on the internet, but I still wanted to share my story and a bit of my history with the Final Fantasy series. Like how I first got into the series and how it's affected or even changed my life since. I'm doing my best to explain like why this series has been so important to me over the years and still is today. So listen in or watch. If my story resonates with like anyone, feel free to share your own story in the comments. How did you get into the series? Anyways, thanks so much for tuning in to hear my story and I really appreciate it. Let's get started. Okay, to start my story, we need to jump back over 30 years before I even knew about Final Fantasy. I was probably around four or five years old and I was already into video games, like in general. Back then we had a Sega console and I played my first games on that. These games were Sonic 1, Sonic 2 and Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles and Spinball and some other Sega games. My older brother played those games and through him I got hooked on for example Sonic also. I also played other games like Mickey Mania, Fantasia, Mortal Kombat, Golden Axe and Donald Duck games that were released for the Sega console. My first real experience with an adventure and role-playing game was with a game called Sorcerer's Kingdom. This game was released on Sega and I got this game from somewhere and I just wanted to try it. But hey, who else remembers this Sorcerer's Kingdom game on Sega? Comment down below. I was so young that I didn't even understand what a role-playing game was or how you were supposed to play it. <laughs> but I still played it and in my little mind I thought it was an incredible game. You could explore, level up characters, collect weapons and fight enemies and bosses. It was totally different and way more complex than the Sonic games or Mickey Mania or Donald Duck games that I have been playing. The game had this huge world where you could go to different places, meet characters and there was a story. Not that I really understood the story at the time, but still, I kinda distantly followed what happened in the story while I just played the game. But yeah, this was my first taste of a role-playing games and I was absolutely hooked. Since I had already played uh, Sorcerer's Kingdom, I was super hyped about uh, role-playing games in general. I remember wondering like if there were any other games like this Sorcerer's Kingdom out there that would be so epic. And at some point, I don't remember exactly when, but I came across a name and the name was Final Fantasy. I read about it probably in a gaming magazine or whatever and learned that if any game was the ultimate uh, role-playing game, it was Final Fantasy. Okay, I remember thinking like if this uh, Final Fantasy game is anything like uh, Sorcerer's Kingdom, I would be all in. And if I ever got the chance to play it, that would be again epic. 
so yeah, I was immediately interested. The only problem was, of course, like I had no idea how would I ever get to play a Final Fantasy game. Uh, or I had like no idea about that the Final Fantasy was like a series of games, like that there is more than one Final Fantasy. But yeah, anyways, I, I didn't get to play Final Fantasy right away back then, but the name definitely stuck with me. Final Fantasy. So, thanks to Sorcerer's Kingdom, I was kind of hyped about uh, Final Fantasy before I had even played a single one of them. Jumping ahead, I started uh, hearing news about the game called Final Fantasy VII, maybe in a magazine, online, on the internet, or even on a TV. It was 1997 and uh, Final Fantasy VII was coming to Europe. I heard it was a PlayStation release and uh, it, it got a lot of attention back then. But I didn't have my own PlayStation console yet. So yeah, that was kind of a problem again. But anyways, for me, uh, just the fact that it was called uh, Final Fantasy was enough for me that I knew uh, that I wanted to play that game someday. So, one day, one of my friends got a PlayStation and he told me at school that with the PlayStation console uh, he got a copy of Final Fantasy VII. Then one day uh, he invited me over to try it out and oh boy, I was interested. And of course I went. So the moment I started up uh, Final Fantasy VII for the first time, I had no idea that this one moment would end up having such a huge impact on my life and basically changing my life. I mean, wow, I was completely hooked from the start. Even though I still didn't understand much of English, but the world and the story and the characters completely drew me in. The game mechanics, battles, weapons, characters and music were all just incredible. I started playing Final Fantasy VII at my friend's place because I still didn't have my own PS console and I ended up staying over at my friend's house for many nights so we could just keep playing Final Fantasy VII. We would play it through the nights and into the mornings, uh, only stopping to eat when my friend's mom made us food and when I needed to go home. And one of the most magical moments I still vividly remember is when we finally got out of Midgar into the open world of Final Fantasy VII. That was honestly one of the most amazing gaming experiences I have ever had at that time. As a kid who didn't even understand much of about real life yet, I dove straight into the vast world of Final Fantasy VII. It felt like falling down into a rabbit hole that I was meant to go into. I often think about how mind-blowing it was to play such a huge game at such a young age, like trying to keep up with its complex story, world and battles. Sometimes I wish I could go back and relive those moments when I started up a Final Fantasy game for the very first time. I never actually finished uh, Final Fantasy 7 back then. I think we got stuck on the second disc or something. Anyways, Final Fantasy 7 was a massive and memorable experience for me back then. And I'll never forget that. But yeah, we will talk about uh, Final Fantasy 7 a little bit later in this video. When 1999 rolled around, uh, I heard Final Fantasy VIII was coming up and when I heard a new Final Fantasy game was coming out, I was beyond excited. All I needed to see in the games 
title was Final Fantasy, and that was enough for me. Again. <laughs> so, I knew that I wanted that game. New Final Fantasy game was huge back then. I had been telling my parents for a while that I had to get Final Fantasy VIII and a PlayStation. I must have those. And eventually I did. One of the best Christmas gifts of my life was Final Fantasy VIII and a PlayStation. My little mind was blown. Final Fantasy VIII has a special place in my heart because it was the first uh, Final Fantasy game that I actually owned and played through completely on my own. I can still remember everything about it so <laughs> vividly, like the music, the epic intro, those first CGI cutscenes, the doll admission and the junction system. Even though I didn't like understand the junction thing when I first played Final Fantasy VIII, but I still survived. <laughs> um, but yeah, those moments are burned into my memory as if I played the game yesterday. And since then I have probably gone through the whole game at least six or eight times and I have enjoyed every single playthrough. Playing Final Fantasy VIII for the first time uh, was honestly one of the best times of my life as a kid. Because for me it wasn't just a game, it felt like a journey and and a real adventure that I was in. And as I was a young kid, um, I was kind of living that game <laughs> while I played it. My friends and I couldn't stop talking about it at school. We discussed every part of it. The missions, the story twists, the strategies and, and the characters and music. We discussed about FF8 on every break on school days we could. It was like this shared adventure we were all in together with my friends. And when I finally neared the end of the game, I still remember the moment that I beat the final boss for the first time and the words the end appeared on the screen. That happened about a month or two after the game was released. I was sitting on my couch at home, playing it on my old TV, and it was a weekend, maybe Sunday. And the moment I beat the game is one of those special moments that sticks with you, especially for a young kid. Because I still remember I was thinking like, wow, you can actually finish a game this huge. <laughs> Like, this game can actually end, oh my god. And I literally sat there in my chair for probably an hour after the game ended, just crying like a baby. Yes, best memories. Thinking back, Final Fantasy VIII was such a huge journey that it wasn't just about playing. It was about the memories and friendships that came with it. It is a game that made a real impact on me, one that I'll never forget. And then when I was finished with FF8, uh, I just knew that I wanted to learn and know everything about Final Fantasy franchise. I wanted to play all of the games that were released before Final Fantasy VIII and those games that will be released in the future. But yeah, after finishing Final Fantasy VIII, I went and bought me uh, Final Fantasy VII for myself. I found it from somewhere and, and finally I played it through, uh, like properly. Tried to understand the story and battle mechanics more deeply and so on. After all, I had already gotten about uh, halfway through the game uh, to the second disc when I played it with my friend the year before. I have so many good memories of playing Final Fantasy VII during that time. I even went to the library to print out a massive stack of game guides and with my broken English I tried to <laughs> beat Final Fantasy VII 
like 100% finding all the secrets and defeat every boss and figuring every clue to get uh, Aerith alive, um, but didn't, obviously. And yeah, this was probably when I was around 12 years old or something. Also, remember to like this video, leave me a comment and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to support my content, check out the links in the video description. Thanks a lot and let's continue my story. Around the same time or before already, I started to dive deeper in, into the world of Final Fantasy in, in general. Like I began uh, researching like who was behind the games and who composed the music and who directed the games and so on. Like what kind of company was uh, the Squaresoft who made the games. I started following all kinds of Final Fantasy news and tried to get my hands on Final Fantasy figurines and game guides and pretty much anything I could find uh, like merchandise related to Final Fantasy games. Back then I also found a way to play some, some of the older Final Fantasy games on my computer like Final Fantasy VI and V. Uh, for example, uh, Final Fantasy VI I have played like three times and Final Fantasy V I have played four times through. Those games have such an amazing atmosphere, uh, great characters, world building and of course, uh, again, music. When I played these games I just wanted to learn more about the world of Final Fantasy and I started to notice like how certain elements like kept showing up in every Final Fantasy game. Like Chocopos, uh, certain character names, enemies and so on. Around that time I, I also played through Chrono Trigger and Secret of Mana. Already back then I was honestly blown away by how a Japanese game company could create something so special and amazing that I was sitting here playing it all the way in Finland. Because as a young boy I was deeply, deeply affected by these games. One thing uh, what made the like biggest impact on me though was the music in Final Fantasies. I still listen to Final Fantasy music every single day even as I'm writing this YouTube video and I can't even begin to count like how many hours of my life I have spent listening to the music from these games. Nobuo Uematsu is an absolute genius and kind of like a music of God to me. Final Fantasy music even led me to start playing music. Like I started to play piano because I wanted to get closer to the music of Final Fantasy. I wanted to learn how to play those tracks myself and that brought music into my life, like music hobby. And since then music has become a hugely important part of my life. And I'm incredibly grateful that Final Fantasies helped me to discover that. Because without playing Final Fantasies, I think I wouldn't have this playing piano in my life. During the years I even studied music, like I took piano lessons for three or four years and even completed a piano performance diploma. And now, 20 years later, I'm still playing piano. And all of this is thanks to Final Fantasy. And that's pretty wild, I guess. And a couple of years ago I created a YouTube channel where I share my piano covers. 
Johe plays piano. I wanted to start making piano covers of video game music. Mostly from my favorite games and more often than not, they have been Final Fantasy tracks. I practically knew already like every Final Fantasy track by heart, so it has been super easy for me to start making piano covers of the songs. also traveled a lot, thanks to Final Fantasy. I've been abroad multiple times just to hear Nobuo Uematsu's music live. Uh, I've been to Sweden and London, to Royal Albert Hall, to listen to Final Fantasy concerts. I've also been to a few other places too, but these trips have been really nice and uh, so memorable. One of my goals in the near future is to attend uh, a Final Fantasy Rebirth concert somewhere in Europe. But let's see if that happens. So every new Final Fantasy release was a massive deal for me and to my friends as we were kids. For example, I remember how we were eagerly waiting for the release of uh, Final Fantasy IX, even though using the internet back then was painfully slow. We had a modem at home, like you connect your home uh, phone line into the modem and it always sounded like a little war was happening inside the modem when it was connecting to the internet. <laughs> But yeah, I have uh, two brothers and each one of us, we had like one hour to use the internet per day, okay? Like one hour use of internet time, because it was so expensive to use internet back then. Um, and whenever I got to use the internet, I used my time to hunt down any information I could find about uh, Final Fantasy IX at that time. I remember looking up the latest trailers and little gameplay footage online that I found and uh, uh, back then the internet was like so slow that I needed to use half of my daily internet time to download one little trailer about Final Fantasy IX. So it took like long time to uh, download even a single video clip. But yeah, it was so slow, but so exciting at the same time uh, with the tech we had back then. Even though I was still just a kid, I somehow kept up uh, with when the new Final Fantasy games would be released and when they would arrive in Finland. Um, I remember calling to GameStop kind of stores or to some other stores that were selling video games in Finland. I was calling them and asking like when they would have Final Fantasy IX in stock. <laughs> I was probably 11 or 12 at the time, but I was fully aware of when the game was coming out and made sure I had my copy reserved well in advance. Uh, like I said, uh, even though the internet wasn't like a big thing yet, I did everything I could to stay on the top of the news, especially when it came to Final Fantasy. And after Final Fantasy IX, I've played uh, Final Fantasy X, uh, 12, uh, 13, 15, uh, 16 and now of course the Final Fantasy 7 remake series. But uh, I won't talk about those games in detail in this video so that uh, this video won't get too long but maybe I talk about them in, in another video in the future. But yeah, going back to some thoughts about the old Squaresoft. Like I already said, I often think about uh, how it's even possible that a Japanese game company all the way 
on the other side of the world with people like Hironobu Sakaguchi, Nobuo Uematsu, uh, Yoshinari Kitase and Tetsuya Nomura working there could have such a deep impact on a kid here in Finland. It's just honestly mind-blowing when I think about how much this team and the games they created have influenced my life. Even though I live in the middle of nowhere, literally on the other side of the planet. I still follow everything that like happens around the Final Fantasy series very closely. I still read every bit of news and keep up with what's going on inside uh, Square Enix, uh, what games are in development, which teams and people are working on them, and, and which Final Fantasies are coming out next. And I follow a lot of people on YouTube, for example, uh, who make uh, Final Fantasy content. But yeah, the whole point of this video was to reflect on how I got into the series and how much this game series has affected my life. And as you can maybe see, Final Fantasy has impacted my life in many ways. From hobbies to friendships, uh, traveling, uh, maybe some career dreams. And it has given me unforgettable memories and moments. The series has been with me since I was a kid, and it still is, even though it has been nearly 30 years since I first touched a Final Fantasy game. And now I'm talking about these things here on my YouTube channel. It's just funny. I'm sure I haven't even remembered everything the series has brought into my life, but each game has had its own significance. Even though there have been ups and downs along the way, Final Fantasy remains one of my all-time favorite series. But I would really love to hear from you, like how has Final Fantasy or any other game series impacted your life? Has it brought new friends, hobbies or even a career for you? What kind of memories you have when you played a Final Fantasy game for the first time? So yeah, that's just a brief overview of why Final Fantasy has been such a meaningful series in my life. Maybe I'll continue this story in another video. But yeah, thanks for listening my story and thanks for watching this YouTube video. I'm Johei and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.